the creators just talking about. So you just start off telling me what your original role was in the creation of Big Red. In terms of how it, it, how it came involvement uh -huh. at all, uh, I'm just a student, and I'm a student going to these basketball games, and uh, I had had some experience with costume characters in the past at Kings Island up near Cincinnati, wearing them actually, and then for a summer actually uh, maintained them, so I understood how they were assembled and how they broke down. Mm -hmm. And, and then managed the performers. So both a performer and a manager and understood how they worked. So I had seen uh, very honorable efforts to try to recreate a mascot here and um, had just noted it, didn't, wasn't doing anything proactively to get involved further, but had a couple of fraternity brothers who were actually cheerleaders, who one uh, night I overheard a conversation talking about uh, Ron Vack maybe having had a conversation with, because I think the cheerleaders were under uh, irresponsibilities then. And um, saying, yeah, they're still looking for a mascot. And I said, well, hey, you know, I don't know what it would be, but uh, you know, I can think about some things. They made the connection with Ron, and as I recall, uh, expressed that willingness to Ron. And so I, uh, we hooked up with a meeting, and prior to that meeting, which Ron indicated to me it was going to be with Gary Ransdell, Dr. Ransdell, um, who was in the Alumni Affairs Office. Um, I scribbled a couple concepts on paper. Not good. They were, uh, there was a, a bear and a sweater, um, something else that was not you know, really on target. And having drawn them and not much of an artist realized we really don't have anywhere to go with this except for discussion. You know, there has to be progress made. In any case, so then went to the meeting uh, at the Alumni Center, uh, three of us, uh, Dr. Ranstell, uh, Ron and myself, and um, talked about how, as I recall, the other items weren't really appropriate, that they had inherent problems um, because it was a, a bear and not something associated with Western. And then it occurred to me it needed to really be something totally separate, unrelated to anything that could be branded on its own. And that's where, um, in uh, a single scribble, the uh, concept. And I scribbled it and turned it and said something like this. And uh, I don't remember exactly your reaction, but I think it was a lot of, OK, uh, you know, explain. And, uh, but anyways, that was the initial. And then a little bit more discussion came out of that. And uh, it was, OK, if we're going to do this, what do we have to do for the next steps? And it went from there to a little bit more expanded idea, kind of blow the concept out, to a meeting with uh, Dr. Zacharias, who was the president at that point in time. And uh, Ron's recollections of that meeting are pretty interesting, but basically, uh, taking a very crude drawing of now colored in with red marker to the president of the university asking for university funds to build this character and then off we went from there. So not only did you actually draw the first big red but you played the first big red. Well it, it started on paper then uh, purchased the materials then glued the materials, then sewed the materials. Um, so really, pretty much all of it was my fault at that point in time. It, you know, we sewed it, glued it, wore it. So what do you think about the big it. red they have today compared to your first? You know, so glad that it's not anything that I did. I mean, it's truly a, you know, professional costume. It, it, it has all of the attributes that a mas mascot needs. There you go. And um, so, obviously, much more sophisticated Big Red these days. It's come a long way, that costume. Yes, absolutely. So, tell me about your, the, you know, Mr. Ruff was just talking about the very first ball game when you appeared as a present to the university. Tell me about that experience. Well, that was, it was just determined that that at first home game that, that the costume would debut. So, everything was, I think our meeting probably was in maybe late September, 1st of October, that we, there was finally a green light on this project. And so then it was just a mad dash to December 1st to try to get something built and ready to wear. And so it was done. And I think uh, 
Ron Beck, and I don't know if Dr. Ransdell saw it before it went in that box. I think they probably did. In any case, uh, at that point in time, it was very unnerving because we were not knowing, you know, whatever you've done it. People that I knew, my friends knew that I was doing this project, so there was, you know, personal embarrassment at stake. Not to mention that the university had sanctioned this, so I felt obligated under those circumstances to make it work, but not really knowing. So, uh, standing me on a wooden dolly that with holes in it that I couldn't see, balancing myself, and then built, putting a box around me, and then rolling, uh, rolling the character out uh, in the dark, couldn't see a thing, uh, really not knowing exactly where I was going to be when the box opened up, or if there would be jeers or cheers or just what is it or whatever, which ended up being really all of the reaction that we got. But uh, at that point in time, it was a feeling of, you know, well, you're in it now. Whatever's happened is going to be, you know, what you make of it. And, you know, once the lights came on, the box opened up. Just did your thing. You, there you were. And what was the reaction? Were people cheering? It's hard for me to say. Uh, we were recalling some of this, and uh, there was just too much adrenaline flowing. Although I felt confident in uh, performing in costume because that's something I had done hundreds of times before. Um, so it was just sell, sell, sell. Anything else you want to add? No, it's been, I, I will say though that there have been uh, so many more people that have made this character what it is. And uh, the university's commitment to it as well as all of the students who have portrayed uh, Big Red really make Big Red what it is. It, everything starts somewhere, but it only starts small. And what's happened to this character really is a result, result of a whole lot of dedicated people who have committed their energy, their sweat to make it happen. And it's a testimony to all those people who have contributed that effort that makes Big Red what it is. Thank you very much. Tell me then, what was your role in the original concept creation of Big Red? As assistant dean of students, I had responsibility for the cheerleaders and lots of the student activities. I was the dean of fun on campus at the time. And uh, we had been working to come up with a mascot concept for a couple of years. Gene Cady was our basketball coach at the time and he really wanted some spirit injected into the activities. And we had had uh, a student dress up as a topper with a top hat and tails and twirled a basketball and had a cane and it just didn't go. We had a whole year and, and it just didn't work. And Katie was honest to come up with something else. And Gary and I, Gary was in alumni affairs, I was in student affairs and we worked together on a lot of projects anyway. So we started working to come up with an idea and we were headed towards a red gorilla. Uh, the Portland Trailblazers, I believe it was the Portland Trailblazers, had a gorilla uh, either that or the Phoenix uh, basketball team. It was, it was a black gorilla and he ran around, was crazy and threw bananas and stuff like that. So we were going to have a red gorilla. And then uh, Ralph uh, got word of what we were trying to do and, and came in and we started talking and we started developing a concept and the f longer we talked the more it looked like it might be something that would really work. We had had problems, many people had had problems over lots of years trying to figure out what is a hilltopper. And we had all kinds of drawings and things that people had done long before I got to Western. Uh, we had hillbillies, we had uh, coon dogs, um, somebody had drawn a, a character that was dressed like somebody that had come out of the Alps and had the suspenders and the shorts, I mean just all these things but they never really resonated and it's hard to define a hilltopper. So, when, when Ralph started working on the physical concept, we had already begun to identify some, some characteristics, personality characteristics that needed to be incorporated into this thing. Uh, high energy. The character needed to be lovable, needed to be approachable by children. Um, and then as, we, as it evolved over time, uh, the personality of Big Red uh, took on mischievousness, uh, slyness, um, uh, a sense of humor, simplistic view of the world, all of those kinds of things that ended up coming to embody the character. 
but those came over time and physically you had to just start somewhere and that's what Ralph did such a good job of when he was delivered, he Big Red was delivered as a present from uh, Santa Claus since this was the first of December. Cheerleaders in Santa Claus bring a present to our basketball coach Gene Cady, first home basketball game and uh, we worked it out to, to where uh, we, we had this box that was wrapped up but the sides would fall away and we had it set up with the band that as soon as Big Red came out of that box uh, the, the, the band would start playing stand up and cheer and when that happened when the box flew open and Big Red burst out and started running around the crowd jumped up and started clapping and Big Red was accepted from that point forward and then everything else is just icing on the cake. So did you get any kind of feedback, reaction from fans or students? And you know, being in your position, you probably get a lot of feedback about everything. So did you get feedback about Big Red? Yeah, and it was all positive. When, when you see that what we were looking for was for the crowd to react positively and for us to have a genuine mascot that was our own. And we had that through uh, Big Red, uh, the costume was created and built. One of the char physical characteristics that Ralph may not have even realized he was doing when he designed the, the, the costume was the ability to open up his mouth and take things into his mouth. Pom-poms, purses, little babies, anything. And, and that mouth, when you lean his head back and the mouth came up, that gave us uh, a real characteristic that others can't duplicate. One of the other things that Ralph probably didn't realize at the time, but because of the way that character's designed, you can express emotions, various emotions. If you look at some mascots, like the Louisville Cardinal, the, the eyebrows are set so mean that, that you look at that character and you, it's, he's unapproachable, except for a fighting Cardinal, which is what he is, which is fine. Our mascot, can be whoever and whatever he wants to be by putting on little pieces of costume, by expressing, learning how to express yourself in the suit, etc. Yes. Uh, don't have one, Terry. Okay, now, just to review really quick, what name did we give to these little blue ponds? X. X. And why did we give the, them the name?